Well, hey, everybody, this is Chris DeFurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by La Marzocco, who's been making espresso machines by hand in Florence since 1927. And in all of those years, their success and popularity in the coffee industry has been based on serving their customers the most beautiful, reliable, and innovative espresso machines on the market. One such example is the KB90 espresso machine. This has straight in locking portafilter technology that La Marzocco invented to help solve ergonomic issues. It has scales built into the drip tray for accuracy of extraction. It also has the auto flush feature in the group heads, keeping things clean effortlessly and increasing workflow efficiency. That's just one of many examples that La Marzocco has of machines that will fit your coffee bar perfectly. La Marzocco is available to help you make the right decision what kind of espresso machine you need for your shop. Go ahead and reach out to them, info at lamarzocousa.com. One of their salespeople will help get you situated. Wonderful people, wonderful machines. I highly recommend if you're looking for an upgrade in your espresso machine, outfitting a new shop, La Marzocco needs to be your first stop. Go ahead and visit them over at lamarzocousa.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Espressly, who is creating custom branded mobile apps for coffee retailers, independent coffee shops who are trying to set themselves apart would do well to look into using Espressly for their custom branded app. That's not just a dot on a map. When you look up coffee shops in a region, when your customers have your app on their phone, They can just log into your menu. They can order and experience your brand right in the palm of their hand. It's a no risk model when you work with Espressly. There's no setup or development fees. You get the drive through payment scanner, receipts and label printing capabilities. All of the data is stored in the app and it integrates with some of the world's best payment processing systems, including Square. So this is something I think you should definitely look into. Go ahead and check them out and have them get started on your app today over at Espressly.co. That's Espressly. Dot co. Okay, everyone. Well, today I wanted to talk to you about the right tools, wrong job. Here on Keys to the Shop, we have lots of tools. There are a lot of different ideas, different frameworks, you know, five steps to this, seven steps to that, information that you can use to make where you are right now in your career work better to apply these principles to your job will increase your effectiveness. It will create a better result for your staff and for the bottom line of your business. It depends on what you're talking about. If it's where we have financial discussions with experts and entrepreneurs and they give some tips on what they've done to be successful, no doubt those things will help you be successful also. Of course, we talk about SOPs. We talk about checklists, we talk about one-on-ones, management tactics, leadership development, personal development, layout and workflow. There's all sorts of information out there, not only on this show, but also at Coffee Fest or other websites and other podcasts and books and videos. So there's no shortage of great tools and insights to apply to your situation. But it has been said that one of the most tragic things that can happen is that you work so hard climbing up the ladder only to find that the ladder is leaning against the wrong building. That is, these are the right tools, but you're in the wrong place. And the tricky part here is that you could be using checklists and good management you know, frameworks and things like that. And it could make things work enough to where it keeps you in that place longer maybe than you should be staying there. We've had episodes before on the show where we talk about how to identify the opportunities for moving on and what is the right job for you. I'm thinking of my friend, Scott Barlow, who runs a company called Happen to Your Career. You can find the link in the show notes to that one so we can figure out like how do we create intentionality and make a great decision for ourselves that may mean that we leave where we are right now and that you don't change careers or subjects. You don't have to get out of coffee necessarily, but maybe it's not the right shop for you. Maybe it's not the right position in the shop for you and you need to find the place where it's your sweet spot. And, you know, we talk about these things this week because in our last episode, 
394, we featured an interview with Vendeline Van Bunik, who is the founder of the Happy Coffee Network. And her career was a case study in trying to find place. And having a lot of pressure on you to perform is on one hand, an opportunity. When we challenge ourselves, that's great. You know, we can grow. It's just like, you know, lifting weights or exercising in any capacity or learning or, or, you know, going to school, it's uncomfortable. And the trick here is learning the difference between uncomfortable and damaging. And what I would encourage you to do, if you haven't listened to my little live video on Instagram, I have kind of a live video on Instagram where I talked about some thoughts on getting out of the noise and into nature and zeroing in on your own thoughts. I would encourage you to listen to that over on Instagram. If you don't follow keys to the shop on Instagram, it's just at keys to the shop. I'm going to encourage you to follow the channel there. That'd be great. But I do want to draw your attention to that because when we're saturated with tips and tricks and tools and strategies, we think that the only way to find joy, happiness, satisfaction, and that deep soul level fulfillment is by using the same kind of methods. This is not the case. Okay. We need to pay attention to what our hearts are telling us in the moment and do so consistently enough to know that truly something is wrong. Now we have to have self-awareness. We have to realize that maybe I'm, you know, and I've been here many times, (laughs) maybe I'm just being a big old baby, you know? I just don't like learning. I don't like people challenging me. And yes, I'm being petty. I know I am. So I just need to get over that. That's true. Sometimes that's the case. And sometimes it's the case that other people who are your bosses or the position itself and the work itself is truly, while maybe presenting an opportunity for betterment in some way, you know, some peripheral benefit is also destroying you and will destroy your capacity for sustainable joy and growth and other opportunities in the future. That's not worth it. (laughs) That's not worth it. And the only way to know whether or not that's happening is to take a step back and contemplate that, is to unplug yourself in a way from the tips and tricks and templates and spreadsheets to pay attention to what you see happening and pull out the lesson, the theme. You see, every year this seems to happen like clockwork over and over again. I'm getting worse and worse in my attitude. I'm getting worse and worse in my energy. It doesn't seem to be the right fit for me. And I know that this is absolutely not something that I'm just like saying, okay, it's not the right fit for me because I'm presented with a challenge, okay? Because I've given it enough time and I've honestly assessed my own strengths and weaknesses to know what that looks like You know, maybe you've overcome some challenges in the past and you've said, this is what it looks like for me to meet a reasonable challenge and to overcome it and to grow through it. And once you have a few of those under your belt, when the unreasonable challenges come in, when the ones that are toxic come in, you can set those examples side by side and say, see how this is different? You see how the way that this is structured is dissimilar to this one, right? Now, the only way, again, that you can do that is through intentional reflection. And that means maybe slowing down, giving up some things. And I, you know, I've said this so many times after the pandemic, a lot of people who I know personally decided that the pandemic was a perfect opportunity, a forced slow down or full stop where they now could jump off the hamster wheel. They, they could decide with good conscience that they were going to change. They may have gotten out of coffee completely because they've always wanted to, but never knew how. They may have changed the way that they did business. They may have changed positions. And this was the perfect opportunity. And the reason why it didn't happen before is out of loyalty, is out of obligation, guilt for doing the right thing for yourself. You're the only one who can make that decision. And a manager who applies great tools to help people, whether for their own benefit as a manager or for the benefit of those people, is still just applying things that are meant to enhance and help people who are in the right positions. But if you're not paying attention 
to yourself in what's right for you, then these tools are actually going to keep you in a place where it's not going to be helpful. And I think that it's important for you to kind of think about, okay, where do I go from here? Well, I think that where you go from here is carve out intentional time for reflection and compare and learn about the way that you learn, learn about the way that you grow. Be a student of your own career. Instead of downloading a podcast about somebody else's career and then being inspired, et cetera, an inspiration can only go so far, you know? You have to have a certain degree of self-knowledge in history, in an understanding of your own history and strengths and weaknesses. And that self-awareness is the basis on which inspiration can actually be applied and make a difference. But if you've not got that intentional time or a habit, a reflection, then all of this stuff that you hear on this show or anywhere else is just going to, you know, it's not going to stick because there's nowhere for it to stick. It's like trying to brew coffee with distilled water. There's no minerals. It can't grip the flavor, right? And so let's remineralize our careers, if you will. Let's figure out how to have that kind of substance within ourselves and of ourselves that will be able to clearly see what the opportunity in front of us is and extract what's true from it, whether it be bad or good, because water is not going to discriminate. You've had plenty of bad cups of coffee, just like I have but the minerals in that water will pull it out no matter what. And they'll let you decide what it is that you've got there, whether it's a great cup of coffee, the right fit for the, you and a job or a career and that kind of thing, or not. Maybe there's a bad aftertaste and you need to adjust something in the grind. And maybe you also need to adjust something in how it's sourced. That might be some deep work needed here. So I want to leave you with that. Everyone's at different places in their career, in their business. And the answer is not going to be something that you can apply just today and all of a sudden things are going to change. This might be years in the making, but I would rather see you take this journey and have it take a couple of years in the right direction than have you stay for another five, 10 years going in the wrong one. So I hope that this is helpful for you. And I hope that it helps you as you listen to this show and other content that's out there to do so in a way that is in concert with the knowledge of your own history, what's meaningful to you, and what and where is truly right for you. So thanks, everybody. I appreciate you. As always, go ahead and subscribe to the show. Share these episodes. Follow us on Instagram. And I will see you here next week for another edition of Shift Break. From Keys to the Shop.